Greetings and salutations, my wonderful pen friends. Welcome back to another Fountain Pen Review video. And in today's review, we're going to be taking a look at another model from the U.S. manufacturer Franklin Christoph. This is a model I picked up at the Chicago show in 2017. This is the Model 31 Omnis from Franklin Christoph, and this is another one of their uh, much lauded color prototypes. Uh, this is they don't generally name their color prototypes, but um, Tanya Tanaka and I, uh, she's one of my local pen friends, uh, always have fun coming up with our own names for these colors. So this one I call um, Cappuccino Swirl. That's not the official color. That's just what I call it. So so let's go through the, the design of this pen a little bit. Uh, before I do, though, I should mention that these days when you buy a pen from Franklin Kristoff, it comes in a little leather pouch. Uh, with instead of they used to come in clamshell boxes now they come in a little leather pen pouch with a zipper on it it's a functional pouch which i like quite a bit okay so you've got a flat top up here with the chamfered edges and then the finial that holds the clip in place this is kind of the standard franklin christoph clip uh, with the four diamonds on it it's very close to the the barrel here and very stiff um, so you might have a little bit of trouble getting it over the edge of like a jeans pocket or something like that. But once you do, it's not going to go anywhere. Cap tapers down just slightly. And then you've got it where it says Franklin Christoph 31 right here. Uh, one of the things that's a little different from this is they put these three rings. They've etched these three rings into the side of the barrel. This is not a common design trait for Franklin Christoph, but one that gives it a little bit of extra flair. And then you've got a chamfered edge down here and a flat end to the pen. The pen comes off with a full twist, and it's a full twist on Franklin Christoph's very standard block threads here. You've got a long section into which the number six nib is pretty deeply inset. So this is a number six size nib, and this one's a 14 karat gold nib, but it's inset deeply. So it looks a little, I don't know how well you'll be able to see that on the video here, but it's a screw in nib unit. So you can screw it in or unscrew it, replace it as you need to. Um, and then the this pen is, can use standard international converters or cartridges, or can be eyedroppered. So this is a single piece here, um, no seams, and you've got not lots of nice tight threads here. So if you wanted to eyedropper this, you absolutely could. Uh, it does come with a converter though, and so that's what I have in here. The nib is a kind of standard 14 karat gold Yovo nib, but with the Franklin Kristoff logo etched into it. And this is another one of Jim Rouse's SIG, or Stub a Talent Gradient grinds. It's on a fine nib this time, and the, the experience of the fine SIG is very interesting. It's, it's hard to tell that it's not just a regular fine nib, except for just a little bit of, of pleasant feedback that gives the nib a touch more tooth, but um, we'll get to that in the writing sample. In the hand, it's very comfortable, uh, nice long section. The threads are completely out of the way. It's long enough that you don't have to use it posted. If you want to post it, you can, and it gets it gets pretty long at that point, uh, too long for me, but the cap is very light. Even capped, the whole pen is only 26 grams. So uncapped, it's 15. So this is a very light pen. It's, it's one of those rare pens that's larger but lighter, uh, which is a nice combination. Okay, so that is the Franklin Kristoff Model 31. It's, it, it is a very Franklin Christoph design. You know, it's, you've got the chamfered edges, you've got the diamond clip here, you've got the, the, um, the block threads, the, the longer section. This is a very Franklin Christoph design, but it's also a little different than in a lot of their other designs, which I like. I actually really like the design of this. This is probably my favorite model of theirs right now. And I've seen it coming out in some really interesting materials. There's a purple material that I saw at the Chicago show that I was, it was a real tough call between the purple, which is kind of a standard color, was at the time, and this, which was a color prototype. So I ended up going with the color prototype. Glad I did. I like it. But that purple one has my eye too. So let's go ahead and do some measurements and comparisons. And then I'll do some writing and show you how this little beauty writes. <music>
as I seem to be talking about a lot lately. A quick call out before I start the writing review that Karin Dosh Colors of the Earth Grand Canyon is another one of those empty bottle 2018 challenges that I'm going after. This one I'm not sure I'm going to get to because I took two bottles of the old Karin Dosh Colors of the Earth which is these bottles here. And I don't know if you've, uh, I've, I haven't, don't know, think I've shown these for a while, but they're, they're very pretty, big, chunky glass ice cube bottles, but they're not great to fill from. So I took two of those and used them to fill up a, um, uh, an old Ackerman bottle. Uh, so I'm basically trying to empty two bottles of this, but some of these Car and Dosh Colors of the Earth inks that got discontinued in 2014, 2013, 2014, um, people have reported the color shifting. And so I wanted to use these up before the color shifted on me and I ended up losing it. It's one of my favorite browns. And so I uh, figured I might as well use it up while I got it and it still looks good. So anyway, let's dive into the writing now. So this is a signib. I'm going to go ahead and show you here. It's a fine signib and I have a very difficult time seeing a huge difference between the downstrokes and the cross strokes, which is not unexpected. It's not meant to be a huge variation when you start from a fine nib. There's just not a lot you can grind away to give you a ton of line variation, but that's something you should be aware of. Now, what this does feel like to me is like a platinum medium nib or a sailor medium nib. It's got that kind of pencil-like feedback that I find very pleasant and that really likes to write well on very smooth paper. So this Rhodia pad, for instance, is sometimes very smooth nibs have a hard time with it because it is, it's so slick. It's such a hard coating on the paper. But in this particular case, because that nib's got a little bit of tooth to it, it, it grabs the paper and really writes. Now, this is one where you're going to want to have a light hand. If you're heavy handed, and I can tend to be a little heavy handed when I write or over grip when I write, it may be a touch on the feedback heavy side. But if you're not, it really is a lovely writing experience. It is a pretty good wet flow for how fine the nib is. And uh, actually, it's quite a good wet flow for how, or ink flow for how fine the, the nib is. Can see you get a nice long streak of ink right there. And it does get a little bit of line variation, but less line variation than you'll see. I kind of railroaded it there for pushing it a bit too hard. Um, less line variation and more ink variation. So you can see here how I get some really nice shading with a little bit of downward pressure. And you can actually see that in my writing up here. Now, part of that is the ink. This is a very highly shading ink, but you can get some really cool shading here uh, if you if you ha tend to be a little bit heavy-handed like I can. Uh, in terms of reverse writing, let's give that a try. Ultra extra fine line, very dry, but very smooth, surprisingly smooth actually. Um, so if you needed to do quick upside down notes, you could do that. And otherwise, you know, I just really haven't had any problems with the writing on this pen. Uh, you know, Franklin Kristoff pens are, I, I find them to be very consistent. I, I kind of know what I'm going to get and I like what I get. So I keep getting it. You know, it's, I go by their table at every pen show and I always am on the lookout for something new or something, a, a different material, something interesting. I really wanted to try the model 31 and it's my favorite model out of all the ones they make. It's, it's long. It's, it's not so big as the Model 19, which felt a little too big for me. Um, it's not so long as the Model 66 or 65. Uh, it's not a pocket pen, which I like their 45. I've got that floating around here somewhere. The, oh, here it is. The, here's the, for comparison's sake, here's the 45, here's the 31. It's not a pocket pen. It's a good size pen, but it's not overly huge. And uh, I love this material. This what I'm calling cappuccino swirl. It's so comfortable in the hand and it's so lightweight. So you can just write and write and write and write, you know, at only 15 grams with the converter full of ink in there, it's a very light pen for its size. So that is my writing review of the Franklin Christoph model 31 Omnis, excuse me, I had to check the name, the model 31 Omnis. 
So I bought this pen in May of 2017 at the Chicago Pen Show. I bought it there at the the show and I bought it for $175. So the base price of this pen is, uh, excuse me, that is not correct. That is the wrong amount of money I paid for this pen. That's what it would have been with a steel nib. I thought it was a steel nib. I had to unscrew the nib to check. It's actually a gold nib. So the pen runs anywhere from 165 to 275, depending on the nib unit. 165 is the base price. Uh, there's an upcharge for a gold nib, which I have, and then an extra 15, 10, 15 dollar upcharge for the SIG grind, which I also have. So I'm I think I paid 260 total for the pen. I think that's what this pen would go for. Um, at, at between 175, 260, this is a very common price range for uh, a US made acrylic machine lathe pen from a small manufacturer that does really good quality control and work on the nib. Um, you know, standard, this is, this is a very kind of standard price here. It's not the same price as you're going to get on a mass manufactured pen, like a pilot custom 74 or 912 or, 823 or something like that. This is not a mass manufactured pen. This is a small batch manufactured pen, which is why it's a little bit more expensive. One of the other things I'm a big fan of with Franklin Kristoff is their designs are pretty unique. I can I can see a Franklin Kristoff from across the room and go, I know what that is. You can't always do that with some of those other pens. Some of them you have to take a look at and really go in depth to try to figure out what it is. So I like that they they have developed a brand signature around their designs. Um, would I buy this again at 260 ish? Um, I probably would. I don't know that I'd buy it in this material, and I don't know that I'd buy this nib again, but I would probably buy this pen again at, in that price range. I consider that to be a very reasonable price for a pen like this. Um, it's you, you, as you start to spend more time in the hobby, you start to notice the difference. You know, you look at a, a pen like um, a Monteverde or a Ranga or something like that, where it's, you know, $65, $75, $80. And they're good quality pens. There's nothing wrong with them. But you compare it to something like this. Now, this is not mass manufactured. It's not made of metal. It's, it's made of essentially plastic. But the the construction quality and the attention to detail is just so much higher on a pen like this. Uh, I am willing to pay a little bit extra for that that level of quality. And plus, as I mentioned in some of my other reviews, Franklin Kristoff has, like they touch, they work on every single nib on every single pen that leaves their factory. So you should never get a pen from them where the nib just doesn't work. I mean, we're not talking Visconti here. That was a cheap dig, but an accurate one. Um, you know, we're, they will touch every pen that goes out the door. And so, and they've got great customer service. So, and just in case anyone's curious, I paid for this with my own money. I did not get a discount on it. Uh, so I, uh, this is, this was bought with my own money and these are my own opinions. So that should do it for my review of the Franklin Christoph model 31 Omnis and head over to penhabit.com for some additional photos, links to the other Franklin Christoph reviews that I've done in the past, and maybe check out what the latest giveaway is that we've got going on over there. And even head over to the Penhabit store, check out the Inky Fingers notebook line and see if there's anything that strikes your fancy. So that'll do it for this review. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you here soon for another pen review video. Take care.